tell me about tell me about Toronto. Tell me about your experience since you've been Toronto. Uh, to me, Toronto was like like a fucking. To me, Toronto was like being a male model moving to some little hick town of 200 people and they're all girls and there's a war going on <laughs> and all the good young all the young men are gone it just was easy pickings like there were really? just i don't mean it by by women i'm seeing it by mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. I, everywhere i saw opportunities 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 i move into this incredible apartment we fix it up like a, like it's a goddamn penthouse and then um, I look in across the street. This is the first miracle of Toronto that I was here. I look in. I look out my amazing window, and I go, there's the Review Cinema. Right next to Review Cinema is the local music, music nightclub. Then there's this fucking decrepit old shoe store. What the hell is that? Next to that is a restaurant. Next to that is a restaurant, and below me is a jazz club. What the fuck is that shoe store? <laughs> What the fuck is that in the middle of all this? And I went down there and investigated it. I looked in the window. There were weeds growing in the window. Yeah. And, and I said, whoever has this shoe store, either number one, wants to retire or doesn't want to do this, man. Right. And sure enough, the guy took over his dad's business and he did not want to do it. He gave me the place for peanuts and sold me all the shoes that were in the basement. There were 10,000 pairs of virgin vintage shoes and boxes. I bought those fucking shoes for a couple thousand dollars, then turned the place into a shoe store. I sold every single last pair of shoes and I turned it into an art gallery. And every day that I was there, I was an eight and a half every fucking day of the week. Yeah. Money flowing. I had a toy boat that was this big, a yacht. And every time I made a thousand bucks, I would roll it into a little thing and throw it into the base of the boat. And the boat was filled with money. I felt like a mafia drug dealer with like, I don't know how many thousands of dollars in a toy boat. And I thought, fuck man, if someone said, I want to steal that toy boat, they, they would have had 30,000 bucks cash in the fucking boat. Just from selling shoes. Just selling, well, my pair, yeah, people would come in, they would just buy, there were no price tags, people just put shoes on the, by the way, there are some, there's footage of documentaries and stuff. I'm talking, Virgin vintage shoes in the boxes. Do you remember the end of Raiders Lost Ark when yeah. they would go into the giant warehouse filled with That's what that basement of that place looked like. From the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Holy all shit. All mint condition. Beetle boots for men of every color. Plus, uh, wanna, I'll, I'll grab a pair right now. Wait here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you okay. types of fucking shoes. There are a few surviving uh, fucking copies. Talk to your fans. I'm sure. I'm fucking real. I, quite honestly, uh, uh, well, I mean, I don't have anything to say. What do I? What am I going to say about this? Christian is, is the most incredible. <laughs> yeah. Look, look. Rainbow colored. I mean, I, I wore the shit on rainbow colored platform men's platform shoes. Holy shit! Fucking every type of platform. Oh, look at this. These uh, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse sort of like uh, brogues. Wow. I know, like every goddamn. I sold every fucking last pair. And it was fun, too, and you met a lot of beautiful women. You want me to get up? No, it's not. I'm fixing your fur. All right. Yeah. I killed this animal myself. <laughs> it was a dog, an alley dog. So, all right, so talk, talk to me through that gallery. So you, when, once the shoes were gone. Okay, so, we, uh, so I kicked ass for, for two years, I swear to it God. Took two years to sell the shoes? Two and a half, no, it took a, a, a year. And then after that, it was a gallery. It was the Ronsi Street Gallery for a year and a half. And then one day, they sold the building. And this rich, bald fucker, he checkmated me. And he, I, I, and he ousted me. But that's what everyone does here. Everyone, right. uh, they want to get rid of their tenants so they can go and redo the building. It's, gen it's gentrification and action. Mm -hmm. And I understand it because that's part of the process, too. The building was in sorry condition, but I made it look pretty because I'm just good at going into shitholes right, right. and fucking redoing them. That'll do it for this episode of the ABB Podcast. Don't forget you can subscribe to our full audio episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you find your audio podcasts. The full episodes, highlights, and our live off-the-floor performance videos can be found at our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The AVB Podcast. Of course, you'll find links to our incredible sponsors and this week's guest in the description below. The AVB Podcast is part of the Border City Network. Find more great content at BorderCityNetwork.com. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.